Welcome to section 5.1.2. Today we're going to talk about multiplying binomials and the distributive property, or how do I multiply using an area model. Um, I think we talked about this in the last unit. I'm going to zoom in on this. But when we use an area model, all we're doing is we're basically saying that we can show multiplication as an area. For example, in this diagram, um, I have my multiplication frame, and I've put some tiles on the outside to show how wide it is. Each of these tiles is one, so I know that I'm multiplying four times three. Four times three. And if I do that, if I count these, I'll see that I get 12 tiles. So the area model says that I can write that or I can show how multiplying these numbers gives me a certain size shape and that it will be consistent that way. Okay, when we're doing the problems today, we're going to use the area model, but we're going to list first the factors. The factors are the things on the outside of the frame. In this case, it is three and four. The fact that we have parentheses is telling me that I am multiplying and the result the inside of the frame is what the area is as a sum, and in this case it would be 12. Now we just did this with some numbers, but we can also do this with um, variables. So that's one of the places we're going to go today. In the previous lesson, they gave us They gave us the area as a sum, like something like x squared plus 1x plus 12, or something like that, and we had to make a rectangle. And so we had an activity that we started with today where they had us review a little bit about that process. They already showed us the rectangle made, and they showed us the tiles on the outside. So like we did before, we're going to use this and try to fill in the area as a product, what the outside of the frame has, what's being multiplied, and the area as a sum, what's on the inside. So let's see what we have on this side. On this side, we're looking at the vertical heights of each of these pieces. This was an X, a one, and a one, and they've just put the tiles on the outside. So I can count these and add them up. X plus two on this dimension, and on this dimension, x wide, x wide, one, two, three. They've put those tiles here so we could see it. So this is going to be two x plus three. Now, the inside of the frame has our area as a sum. So we've got two x squareds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven X's and six ones. Okay. Now, just like in the example we showed you before on the paper, these two numbers, factors, multiplied to that these two right here by showing using the area model are going to multiply to this this is what they're going to equal so that's the area from the inside and these are the pieces from the outside now we're going to do one more really quick on this Quickly here, this side is going to shows me a height of x plus four. This side shows me a y plus an x plus a two. And that will give me a value of 
xy plus x squared. I'm going to count my x's. Plus 6x, these are y's. 4y plus 8. Now, I want to show you something because this is going to lead into what we're doing in class today. Um, when we made the rectangles, I told you that it was a wise thing to make sure that all your lines or cracks between your tiles go all the way through the figure. On this one, one of the things that's going to help us see if we do that is how they multiply. Okay, for example, this piece is being multiplied by this piece to get this right here. Well, what is x times y? xy. These are 1's. So what is y times 1? y. And these are all the same, so it's y times 1, y times 1, y times 1. So I have a row of y's. Here, for this piece, I have an x, and I have another x that I'm multiplying. x times x is x squared. Here I have x which is the result of x times 1. This x is a result of x times 1. And these top pieces are just basically the 1 times 1. Now I advised you in class to use the positive sides of the tiles. That's the only ones we're using right now. But that will give you um, a chance that when we change and we go to negative numbers, for example, if I had a negative 1 times a positive 1, then that would make this a negative times a positive would be a negative, And you would use the negative side of the tile. Let's quickly go through some of the things that you're doing in class. They wanted you to multiply, and so they gave us this mat. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm going to put these factors, the things that they gave us, on the outside right here. So I'm going to have an X on one side with three ones. And on this side I'm going to have two x's plus one. Now I could almost draw this easier than I could use the tiles and the assignment asks you to do that, but let's see how it multiplies. Remember all of our pieces have to fit these factors will multiply to something here. I already know I'm going to have a rectangle that's going to cross like this and it's going to have an outside right about there. And let's see what that multiplies to. Once again, an x times an x. The piece that would fit here if I was attaching it is an x squared. Okay, looks like an x squared is going to go there because it is also an x times an x. This is an x times a 1 doesn't work that way, but it does line up right. X tall, one wide, if I put it right there. And then I've got X times a bunch of ones here. I know those are all going to be X's because that's what one times X is. Same thing's happening here. If I've done this right, I will get something pretty close to a rectangle. 1's times 1's are going to give me more 1's. So I'm going to put it right here. And the result is this rectangle. The lines go all the way through. And I'm going to write the area as a product now. And that's going to be 2x squared plus 7x's plus 3. I don't think I'm going to have time to finish the other example I was going to do, but just remember that these factors, you're basically putting them on the outside of the frame, and then you're building the area inside by looking at what's being multiplied here. An x times an x, an x squared. Or you can even, if that doesn't make sense to you yet, you can kind of look at the size. This has to be x tall and x wide. Well, there's only one piece that does that. Good luck, and we'll finish some more of this in part two.